Now to the 21st question. Decree 34 of 1966 was unacceptable to many Nigerians because it was January 15, 1966. The military took over in a bloody coup, which led to the loss of life of the Prime Minister of Nigeria, Tafawa Balewa, to the Premier of the Western Region, Lado Kakintola, to the loss of life of the Premier of the Northern Region, Amadou Belo, and many, many other persons. Now, who, to, who led the military coup? The person who led was Major General Shuku Makaduna Nzeogo. But who became the military head of state when it was successful? It was General Aguiyi Ironsi, Lieutenant General Aguiyi Ironsi. So immediately Aguiyi Ironsi came in. Don't forget, military governments don't govern according to the constitution. They govern with the use of decrees. So if a question comes out that laws made by military governments are called what? They are called decrees. So Aguiyi Ironsi promulgated decrees, decree one, decree two, up till decree 34. Now that decree 34 was promulgated to change Nigeria from a unitary state, sorry, from a federal state to a unitary state. So the correct answer here is that it was perceived to abolish our federal system. To abolish means to extirpate, to expunge, to remove, to terminate, to bring to an end. So to terminate our federal system and change it to a unitary system. And it was unacceptable to Nigerians. Now to the 22nd question. Nigeria spearheaded the formation of ECOWAS during the regime of May 28, 1975. Two West African leaders came together, General Yakubu Gowon of Nigeria and General Nasibe Eyadema of Togo. They met at a city, in a city called Lagos. Lagos was the capital of Nigeria then, and they signed a treaty to establish ECOWAS. So the two West African leaders that spearheaded the formation of ECOWAS was General Yakubu Gowon of Nigeria and General Nasibe Eyadema of Togo. So the correct answer here will be Yakubu Gowon. Mind you, when ECOWAS was established, the headquarters of ECOWAS was situated at Lagos, Lagos being the capital of Nigeria then. But when the headquarters of Nigeria was changed from Lagos to Abuja in 1991, ECOWAS headquarters has also been changed from Lagos to Abuja. Why the headquarters of ECOWAS Fund is situated at Lome in Togo. Headquarters of ECOWAS Abuja, fund, Ed, ECOWAS Fund headquarters at Lome in Togo. So to our 23rd question, the head of Nigeria's foreign mission in a Commonwealth nation is known as DASH. So the official representative of Nigeria in another country is called Diplomats. I'll take that again. Nigeria's official representative in another country is called what? Diplomats. Now, we have some countries that were colonized by Britain. Those countries have an association called Commonwealth States. So, Nigeria's official representative in a Commonwealth State is High Commissioner. While Nigeria's official representative in a non-Commonwealth State, that is states that were not colonized by Britain, is called ambassador. So it means both ambassador and high commissioners, they are diplomats. But our representative in USA is ambassador. Since Ghana was colonized by Britain, Ghana is a Commonwealth state, and Nigeria's representative there is high commissioner. Now, an ambassador is the head of an embassy, while high commissioner is the head of an high commission. So the head of Nigeria's foreign mission in a Commonwealth nation is known as what? High commission. Now to the 24th question. The principle of federal character was adopted in order to promote equitable allocation of, you see, under federalism. Countries that we adopt federalism will be heterogeneous countries. When we say heterogeneous, we mean countries with diverse cultures. You know, in Nigeria, we have over 250 ethnic groups. Which system of government can we adopt or practice that we address the fears of our minorities and promote unity in diversity? It is federalism. Is that clear? Now, when we practice federalism, there has to be a clause in the Constitution called federal character so that when we are distributing appointments, when we are distributing resources, when we are distributing amenities, there won't be imbalance, there won't be favoritism. I'll give an example. If not for federal character, when we are recruiting people into the Nigerian police, some states will not have slots. Because were it to be on merit, you won't be surprised that 
you know, participants from Lagos, from Ekiti, from Delta, from Anambra will come first. Why people from the ELDS, educationally less developed states like Bono, like Yobe, and so on and so forth, they won't have anybody in the Nigerian police force. But because of federal character, appointments like recruitment into the Nigerian police are distributed based on quota. Lagos provide 50, Anambra provide 40, Yobe provide 35, you provide this. So it ensures balance. It ensures equity. It ensures even development when it comes to distributing appointment, distributing resources. Is that clear? So the answer is equitable allocation of positions and appointment among people of various regions. Now to the 25th question. An example of a public corporation. I've said that public corporations are called public enterprises. Any government establishment that is that is involved in the provision of social amenities is called public corporation. So an example of public corporation is Nigerian Television Authority. They provide broadcast services for the people. So Nigerian Television Authority. Another example of public corporation is Nigerian Television Authority, Nigerian National Shipping Line, Nigerian Railway Corporation, and so on and so forth. Now to the 26th question. The component unit of the Nigerian Federation comprises of the federal governments, the state governments, the local governments, and the federal capital territory. So the correct answer will be C, federal, state, local, and FCT. Those are the components that make up the Nigerian federalism or the Nigerian Federation. Now to the 27th question. The rules and regulations of the civil service are called what? They are called general order. So the correct answer is option A. Now to the 28th question. Franchise in an electoral process means dash. Franchise in any democracy, it means the right to vote and be voted for. I'll take that again. Franchise refers to the right to vote and be voted for. Now, if you come across a question like the right to vote is called dash, if you see franchise, that's correct. But what, what if you do not come across franchise? It could also be called suffrage. So in this context, franchise is the right to vote. If the question were to be like this, suffrage means dash, it is also the right to do what? To vote. But it is also the right to be voted for too. Now to the 29th question. One essential duty of a citizen to his state is to dash. Now, as a citizen of Nigeria, you are, you are obligated to carry out certain duties. Number one, you will pay your tax. That's the most important duty of any citizen. Number two, you will be loyal to your state. You won't support any other entity to bring your state down. To support them is to commit a treasonable offense. Is that clear? And then you will show support and respect for national symbols, like your national flag, national anthem, national pledge, and so on and so forth. So the essential duty of a citizen here is to do what? To pay his tax. Now to the 30th question. Constitutionalism refers to dash. Now the concept of constitutionalism, it is associated with the concept of constitution. What is a constitution? A constitution refers to the fundamental body of laws, rules, directives, fundamental principles, regulations, customs, and conventions, stipulating how a state is to be governed. That's a constitution. Is it possible to have a constitution, but a state is not practicing it? Yes. What if a state has a constitution and they are practicing it? The practicing of a constitution is called what? Constitutionalism. The adherence, the following, the practicing, the application of a constitution is called what? Constitutionalism. Now, constitutionalism is associated with limited government because it ensures that no government official or no government institution will become too powerful because the constitution would have limited the extent of their powers. So, constitutionalism means limited government. It also means strict adherence to the tenets, to the letters, to the spirits of the constitution. So the answer is D. Now to the 31st question. A main feature of the parliamentary system, under a parliamentary system, also called cabinet or Westminster system, the executive is appointed by the legislature. Okay? So when we elect people into the legislature, 
there will be the majority party. For instance, in the UK, we have the Labour Party, we also have the Conservative Party. So in a general election, let us assume that Labour Party has the majority. Out of about 150 members, let us assume that Labour has 90, while Conservative, they have 60 members. So the majority party in the legislature is obliged constitutionally to produce the person who will become the prime minister. So it shows that the prime minister who functions as the head of the executive is appointed from the legislature. So the answer here is that the executive is appointed by the legislature. Now to the 32nd question. Ending a session of parliament by royal proclamation means dash. The answer is prorogation. Okay, but let me start from what we mean by adjournment. If we have a sitting of parliament currently ongoing right now, if we want to bring it to an end to continue tomorrow or at a later date, the termination of this current sitting or this current proceeding or this current meeting, sitting, proceeding or meeting, the termination of it is called adjournment. So when you terminate a sitting, adjournment, when you terminate a session, that is prorogation. Now what follows prorogation? It is followed by a recess. But when you terminate the life or tenure of parliament, it is called what? Dissolution. And dissolution is followed by general election. So the correct answer here is what? Prorogation of parliament. Now, to the 33rd question. Which of the following is a unitary state? Now, you have to know that Ghana is a unitary state. You have to know that Israel is a unitary state. You have to know that the United Kingdom is a unitary state. And the opposite of unitary system or unitarianism is federal system of uh, federal, federalism. Is that clear? So, having said Ghana, UK, Israel, Sweden are unitary states. Let us look at examples of federal states. Nigeria is a federal state. Brazil is a federal state. Australia is a federal state. Canada is a federal state. New Zealand is a federal state. Russia is a federal state. Germany is a federal state. India is a federal state. Having said that, you know Nigeria is federal. India is federal. United States of America is federal. So the odd one out is Ghana. It shows that Ghana is a unitary state. Now to the 34th question. In a nation, sovereignty is vested in the... The sovereignty in a nation is vested in the states. Now, why is it states? You need to be smart as students. Because if the question had appeared like this, that in a democracy, sovereignty is vested in the dash, the answer would have been electorate. Because the type of sovereignty that occurs under democracy is called political or popular sovereignty. So if the question had been in a democracy, sovereignty is vested in the dash, the answer would have been electorate. If the question had come like this, that political sovereignty is vested in the dash or popular sovereignty is vested in the dash, the answer would have been electorate or voters or people or masses or citizens. But in a nation whereby the type of sovereignty is not specified or speculated, the answer is states. Is that clear? Very good. Now, to the 35th question. Which of the following is a feature of democracy? Now, what are the features of democracy? Under democracy, the majority will have their way, the minority will have their say. Under democracy, the citizens will rule, the people will rule. Under democracy, there will be respect for the fundamental human rights of citizens. Under democracy, there will be popular consultation. It means that before decisions are taken, the government will seek the consent of the people. That's the meaning of popular consultation. An opposite of democracy is autocracy. If you go to Philippines right now, governed by Rodrigo Duterte, there is no democracy there. It means if Duterte wants to implement a policy, he can implement it according to his whims and caprices. Are you getting now? But if you come across any state practicing democracy, the government will consult the people on what their popular opinions are. Now to the 36th question. Private ownership of the means of production is called DASH. Now, we have a system of government called capitalism. Capitalism has to do with private or individual ownership of means of production. What are the key words? Private, individual. We have socialism. It has to do with state or government ownership. 
I'll take that again. Capitalism, private or individual ownership. Socialism, state or government ownership. Why communism refers to collective or common ownership of the means of production, distribution, and exchange. So, private ownership of means of production is central to capitalism. Now to the 37th question. A system based on hierarchies of land ownership is called dash. The answer is feudalism. Why is it feudalism? Feudalism was practiced in the medieval period. We are talking of some 450-500 years ago in, a, in medieval Europe, whereby there were no elected governments, whereby all lands belonged to the monarch, who could be a king or queen, emperor or empress. Now, these lands were held in trust by loyal lords, nobles, or knights, who will now lease these lands to poor farmers, servants, serfs, vassals, peasants, slaves, laborers, and workers. So, a system of hierarchies of land ownership is feudalism. We have the upper category, who rents land out. The upper category refers to the lords, the nobles, or the knights. That's the first hierarchy. While the lower hierarchy refers to the serfs, the vassals, the farmers, the fiefs, the laborers, the workers. Now to the 38th question. State as a political entity refers to a state is a politically organized group of people occupying a definite geographical territory under an organized government with recognition from other international bodies and with sovereign power to regulate the conduct of its people without external control. Mind you, for us to have any state in government, state refers to country. There must be people living there, and those persons must have a particular place they call their own, called territory, or geographical area, or boundary. And they must have a government. The government could be elected, the government could be, a, could be led by a king, the government could, 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 could be led by religious leaders. And then, such states must be independent. It means that before 1960, could we say Nigeria was a state? Nigeria was not a state, because we had not obtained independence or sovereignty. So it, it goes to tell us that a state is a political entity that consists of organized group with a definite territory. Now to the 39th question. Political values are acquired in any given society, true? There is a concept in government called political socialization. Socialization in itself has to do with socializing, learning, acquiring, transmitting, gaining knowledge. So the process whereby citizens of a state we learn, we acquire, we, we, we transmit political knowledge, political beliefs, political ideas, political values, political norms, political affections, political attitudes, political orientations, political skills, from one person to another is called political socialization. So how can we learn political values through political socialization? Now, to so the 40th question. In a democracy, political sovereignty is vested in the dash. Earlier, I mentioned that in a nation, sovereignty is vested in the states. But you see this word called sovereignty. It has to do with the supreme, ultimate, and absolute powers of a state to make and enforce laws without external control. So it means that before 1960, Nigeria did not have sovereignty. Why? We were being controlled by other states by another state, Great Britain. But October 1, 1960, we obtained sovereignty. And another word for sovereignty is what? Independence. So that power of a state, that supreme power, that absolute power, that total power that a state now possesses as a result of independence is called what? Sovereignty. Now, what does this power propel them to do? It energizes them to be able to manage their own affairs without an external entity dictating for them. Now, we have diverse types of sovereignty. A type of sovereignty that is acquired through the law is called the jure sovereignty. While a type of sovereignty that is acquired by force is called de facto sovereignty. Under a parliamentary system of government, sovereignty resides with a parliament or legislature. While under federal system of government, sovereignty resides in the constitution. Under a unitary system of government, students, sovereignty resides with the central government. 
And then, in a democracy, there, are, there is a type of sovereignty called political sovereignty or popular sovereignty. I was mentioning the other time that if a question comes out that in a democracy, sovereignty resides with the Desh, that's electorate of voters. If it also comes out like this, that popular sovereignty resides with the Dash, it is also the same as political sovereignty resides with the Dash. The answer is still what? Electorates of voters. Mind you, students, if you do not come across electorate of voters, what would you choose? First of all, search for electorates. If you do not see electorate, pick voters. If you don't see these two, check for citizens, masses, or people. So, in a democratic government, political sovereignty or popular sovereignty resides with the word electorate. The type of sovereignty that resides with the legislature is called parliamentary sovereignty.